LUK, I'm Rosh from Alighieri and this is my home. Kitchen is really where I spend most of my time. I'll always kind of wake up in the morning and read a book at the dining table with my coffee. And I love the idea that it's open plan in the evenings, having people over when dinner kind of spills out into the living room and long evenings chatting, drinking wine, listening to music. So we completely redid the kitchen, completely gutted it and really wanted this kind of red veined Carrara marble to be the hero. I really always love that juxtaposition between antiquity and modernity, so I love that kind of clean lines in the architecture as a kind of framework for all of these objects that I've collected on my travels and they're all really sentimental. They're pieces and fragments that I've collected over the last 15 years of my life and sometimes during difficult times, sometimes during really happy times and it is always actually really amazing to have my morning coffee and look at them and remember all of these amazing places that I've been to and been so lucky to meet such incredible people in my life. Obviously, being the founder of Alighieri, um, gold, molten gold is really my, my lexicon. So all of the accents like the tap and um, the antiques and the door handles are this kind of hammered bronze and gold. I always think of kind of Italian studios and artist studios as a good reference for, for the flat. I wanted to feel like this creative space. We always say that our, our jewellery is, um, is like armour. We put it on at the beginning of the day. Each piece has a story and it's there to protect us and um, to make us strong. And there's something really powerful for me about coming home at the end of the night and taking off that armour and though I always use these glass vessels that we made, these we call them teardrop vessels and they serve as um, a holder I guess for, for my daily armour. So for my 30th birthday my mum wrote me a cookery book because I wasn't cooking at all at the time and she hand wrote it and it's so special to me and she said, Dear Rosh, all my treasured recipes passed down to me by my mother and some collected over my cooking lifetime. Hope you'll cook some of them and then pass them down to your children. Happy birthday, all the love in the world, mum. It makes me really emotional to read that. And yeah, I've definitely cooked some of these recipes, but there are many I haven't. So this is the year for that. Now let's head on to the living room. This painting is actually one of the first pieces that I bought for the house. I just think that it evokes this idea of family and innocence and the joy of music. And I love how it's kind of this chiaroscuro, there's this kind of ray of light coming in. Frame as well feels very alicari. <laughs> There was an old fireplace here, but it wasn't um, functional. And so we designed, um, in collaboration with Fred Rigby, who's the interior designer that did uh, the, entire, the entire space, um, this kind of curved microcrete fireplace. Again, something that felt really modern um, and links back to the microcrete benches and, and the bathroom. Books are a really big part of my life. I always make it a point to buy a book that means something to me whenever I start a new adventure. I love these little piles, almost feel like totems of books. I mean, when it comes to the shelves, I really love to have negative space to allow each object to kind of breathe and speak for itself, almost like a gallery. And I love stacking books and sculptures together. They have these kind of mini moments. One of my favorite sculptures is this lady here. I love how she lays on her side. She's a fragment of a bigger piece and again I love that, the idea that I own something that is a part of a bigger story. And she reminds me a lot of kind of Rodin and La Tête Endormie. Um, I love the kind of contours of her hair. There's something so elegant about her. Yeah, she's one of my favourites. Before we go downstairs I have to tell you about this wall. So when we moved in it was 
glass bricks and it was blocking a lot of light. It was super 70s, not in a good way. Um, and so we decided to knock it down and put in this arch. Again, really like making it feel like a gallery space, a kind of portal into, um, into our universe, I suppose. Um, and I love that kind of curve there with then that really angular line there. I really, um, I really enjoy that juxtaposition. People do comment on my giant house key. It's not my actual house key. I'm actually notorious for losing keys, so in some ways it'd probably be good if it was my house key because I probably wouldn't lose it. Um, but I just love that idea of um, church vaults um, and crypts and the idea of kind of locking treasure away. So it's just a cute little nod to that. Another nod to how I wanted this space to feel like a gallery, to have these kind of indents um, to really hero these artefacts that I, pre that I collected on my travels. Um, I love this. This was part of a much bigger piece and I found it in, in a market in Naples. Um, I've got our little amphorae, Roman teardrop vessels, which are really sweet and I love how old they are and how weathered they are. And um, I have a little mosaic tile that was given to me by a really good friend for my 30th birthday and I just absolutely love the frame. It feels a lot like the copy of The Divine Comedy actually. Um, so yeah, again, that juxtaposition between modernity and antiquity um, felt really important to have. Let's go down to the underworld. So this kind of little space in between the bedroom and the bathroom, we decided to tile with these terracotta tiles. Again, just trying to bring in a bit of um, tactility and a bit of that Mediterranean villa. The bathroom was one of the first rooms that, that we did and um, I really love it. It's, it's microcrete floor to ceiling. The hero of the bathroom is the giant antique Roman sink that has been battered and actually found it um, with an antique dealer in his garden and uncovered it and cleaned it up and I absolutely love it. It feels almost like an old fountain and paired it with the studio or um, weathered brass fixtures. So it's always those three colours working together, the stone, the really modern microcrete, and then that antique gold brass tone. So in terms of the bedroom, I really wanted it to feel almost like a boutique hotel, like a spa. One of the things I love the most is that I've got this roll tub bath in the bedroom behind um, the amazing Alva Alto um, screen which I really love. It kind of has that Scandi, almost Japanese feel to it. I love Japanese bathhouses. Um, and this is really where I completely let go of everything at the end of the day. I always have a bath at the end of the day. Went for a lot of kind of creams and neutrals with the blinds. Like that idea of having these kind of grow grain linen um, blinds that come down that still let a little bit of light in and the bed sheets again these kind of beige that feel very kind of organic and quite Etruscan in some ways as well. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed having a little glimpse into my universe.